where I am. Welcome to PowerCast with PC. So I pull out my checkbook because I saw my granddad with a checkbook. I saw my grandma with a checkbook. So I'm trying to be an adult, so I use a check. I go give them the check. They give me the check back. Says, this, this is not right. I called, and the issue was not that I hadn't balanced the checkbook, but I had never used the check before. So this is my first time using a check. So they wanted me to verify. So I used the check. I get the stuff. We go to another place. I use a check. Go to another place. I use a check. By the end of the weekend, I go somewhere. And I go to use a check, and they give me the check back. And they say, now you ain't got enough in here. Because I did not know how to balance the checkbook. The lady at the bank says, well, I see that you have a debit card. Instead of using your checks, use the debit card. Because the debit card takes the money out immediately. So you'll be able to look at your account and see that the money is out. So I go back and I say, hey, I'm going to start using my debit card to someone. And they said, I wouldn't mess with that if I was you. As a matter of fact, they said, most, most people are probably going to even stop taking the debit card because there's so much mess with them. Well, well, what do we use more of today than anything? Debit card. You know why? Because the debit card has proven itself to be more efficient and more productive than the check. But when I first got a debit card, its future was not ready for it. So it looked crazy to use. There were some places that didn't even have a place for you to use it. You had to give them the numbers and they would type the numbers in because the debit card had a future waiting for it. It looked dumb in its now. Do y'all remember there used to be this little thing called AOL? And, and if you wanted to get on the internet, you had to have a phone, a house phone, and you had to have a phone modem, and you would type in your little information, and then the phone modem would try to figure out if it could get you on. And if you so happened to try to get on on a Friday night, or a Saturday night, or even a Sunday evening, you were going to have some trouble because everybody's trying to get on at the same time and it would just keep dialing, keep dialing, keep dialing, keep dialing, keep dialing. And then by the time you got on, you got in what they call chat rooms and the chat room was one page. It wasn't very colorful. And for most people like me, you got on there and said, I don't even understand why anybody would want to get on this. This makes no sense. But that was because the Internet had a future that was not ready for it when it appeared. Y'all don't want to talk to me. And, and so what happens is, is though, even though, watch this, it was more efficient for me to send a page out on a pager, you know, type the number so when you look at it backwards and say hello, hi, that was more efficient, that was quicker, watch this, but it was at its cap. That was the best the pager was ever going to be, and that was the best the pager was ever going to do, but the internet was just getting started. It had a future waiting on it, not based upon how it was currently constructed, but based upon its potential. And so there were some people who said, I ain't never going on the internet. I'm just going to use my pager. And the internet kept growing into its future, and the pager stayed the way it was because the pager was the best it was ever going to be. And then after that, we traveled through, through to, to this little thing called the cell phone. And when the cell phone first came out, it was big as this computer. And it was boxy and it was heavy and it was expensive. And people looked at the cell phone and said, this cell phone is dumb. There's no purpose to it. Use your house phone because with the house phone, you can do this and you can do that. And they were absolutely correct at the moment because at that particular time, the house phone was cheaper. The house phone was more efficient because the house phone had reached its limited potential. But the cell phone had a future. And it was just a little bit 
early. And as time went on, you saw st people start to use their cell phone more and their house phone less until eventually the house phone had become, for the most part, obsolete. And the cell phone has now replaced, in many instances, the computer. Why? Because when something has a future, time works for it and not against it. And all the cell phone had to be was what it was. The cell phone never needed to look at the pager and say, why can't I be like you? The cell phone didn't need to look at the house phone and say, why, why can't I just be like you? The cell phone didn't even have to look at the computer and say, why can't I be like you? All the cell phone had to be was what it was. And as time came, it became more and more useful. Can I just prophesy to you that you are, have unlimited potential and time desires to work for you. God has created you so that the Bible says that before you were in your mother's womb, he knew you and he formed you and he created you. Hear this, for such a time as this, you haven't begun to see your best day. You haven't begun to see your best hour. Your potential has not even been tapped. The time, the more it comes, the more useful you are. As time comes, the more productive you will be if you choose to be you. But you got to deal with the layers. You got to make him the Lord over your layers. Okay, what are the layers? Well, the Bible says that this is Jesus talking. Jesus said, here's my ministry. Jesus is announcing why God has called him. Jesus is announcing why God has anointed him for ministry. Jesus is, is announcing why the Spirit of the Lord is upon him. Because he wants us to know that Jesus is the ministry of my layers. He is the Lord of my layers. What's the first layer? layer? Here it is. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That's the first layer. That's the first layer. The first layer is poor, poverty. Now watch this. Poor is not an existential reality. It is a state of mind. I'm going to say that again. And I, I, know, I'm, I know I'm already going to, I know I'm going to have to finish this up later. Poor is the first layer. A poverty mentality. Pastor, why is it that you can tell me that poor is not a reality when I see people on the side of the road saying they're poor, when I talk to people saying that they're poor, when Democrats are saying that we got to take care of the poor, when the Bible says that the poor will be with you always? When the scripture says that the poor will be with you always, the scripture is not talking about a physical reality. It's talking about a mentality that has created that physical reality. Because watch this. There is enough opportunity for no one to ever be poor. Poverty is a choice. Now, let's talk about it for a second. Because I'm not suggesting that poverty is something that people have chosen for themselves. Sometimes poverty is a choice that has been made for us before we even got here. And it is a generational thing that must be dealt with. That people have handed us a mentality of poverty. That people have handed us a thought life of poverty. I am not suggesting that you may not be the victim of poverty. I'm just telling you that there is ministry for poverty. Well, what is the ministry for poverty? Notice how Jesus says, to the poor I preach. Y'all don't want to talk to me here. He, he doesn't say to the poor I lay hands on them. He doesn't say to the poor, I want you to go to the pool of Bethesda and I want you to dip in once the water is troubled. He doesn't tell them, oh, go get me some mud, I'm going to spit it. No, because there is different ministry for every layer of your existence. He says to the poor I preach. You need to hear the good news. What's the good news? The good news is, is that you don't have to be poor. Watch this. Y'all ready for this? The good news is, is that you are not poor. Okay, y'all don't believe it. Jesus said, and, and Paul said about Jesus in, in 2 Corinthians, he said, he became poor that I might be rich. Which means that both of them are choices. So what am I going to choose? Am I going to choose to be the checkbook 
or am I going to choose to be the debit card? Those who are poor are those who won't change. Those who are poor are those who refuse to discern the times. What, what, what do I mean by discerning the times? See, poverty is not just limited to cash. It's not just limited to currency. It's our, it can become our reality. Have you ever seen someone who decided that all the clothes they brought in the 80s, they ain't buying no new ones? And they look stuck. They don't look current. They don't look available. So when you're looking to hire someone, do you want to hire someone that looks like they're stuck in another era? Or do you want to hire someone that looks like they are present? Why? Because it's a choice. There are some people, when you talk to them, they will tell you, well, I just don't like it because I don't like it. You know what that's called? Poverty. That is a mentality that is keeping you limited. It is keeping you from participating. It is keeping you from being a part of what is current. What is current C? What is now? Because here's the problem. You can't be in yesterday and be in faith. Because faith is not a faith for yesterday. Faith is a faith for now. That's why there's so many dried up dead churches that still look like yesteryear. And they wonder why nobody wants to come. And it's not because you don't love the Lord. And it's not because you don't love God. But it's because you love the God that dealt with you yesterday. And not the one who's trying to deal with you today. He says, I came to preach the gospel to the poor. Here's the second one, and I'll, I'll, I'll finish this up later. He says, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and have sent me to heal the brokenhearted. So the first layer is poverty. The second layer is brokenhearted. Now, the enemy is so cunning that most of us, our hearts have been introduced to being broken before we were even aware. Especially those of you who look like me. You were exposed to your heart being broken in environments when you were being developed. So we grow up sick and think we're healthy because everybody around us is sick, and they told us that this is what health looks like. And so we walk around needing help that we don't know we need and get offended when you suggest help because ain't nothing wrong with me. I didn't have my daddy. I didn't have my this. I didn't have my that, but I'm good. When the truth of the matter is, is that we aren't good. And there's nothing wrong with not being good. As long as you know that you ain't good and you can get good. Y'all don't want to talk to me today. Y'all want to shout? Well, that's the problem. We're shouting over something that has to be healed. He said, I came to heal the brokenhearted. Because you can't even trust me with a broken heart. Because when your heart is broken, you trust what broke your heart. So you keep going and looking for what beat you up and broke you down. And sometimes you're looking for it and don't even know you're looking for it. And then you get mad that you're looking for what you know you don't need, but you can't help but look for it because that's all you know. And God is like, no, I came to heal your broken heart. I came to deal with that layer of your onion so that when I give you a word that you can trust me because you have no idea how your broken heart is affecting your spiritual walk with me. You have no idea how you can't trust me as a daddy because you don't trust your daddy. You, you have no idea how you can't hear me when I tell you that's Boaz, but you don't see him as Boaz because you have a broken heart from the last one. So you're looking for something that I didn't call you to enjoy. See, you have no idea how the broken heart affects 